I'm Edna Dean Proctor. I was born in Henniker, New Hampshire, a long time ago, in 1829. And now I live in Framingham with some members of my family, but the place that I lived the longest was Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> I live in the mansion of Mr. Henry C. Bowen. He was my employer, and I was hired as a governess for his children. But before you know it, I was writing for his paper. I was writing my poetry, and I also did some reporting for his paper. Now, if you were in Brooklyn and you were an abolitionist, the church you went to was the Plymouth Church of the Pilgrims, where Reverend Henry Beecher Stowe held forth every Sunday. And he, he would bring in slave chains and he'd rattle them in the church and he would bring in slaves and the parishioners would buy their freedom. Oh, it was an exciting time, let me tell you. And it was, it was January, it was January 10, 1857, and, and I was summoned to the library and I was told to bring my writing tools. So armed with notebook and pencils, I went in. And Mr. Bowen came in with an old black woman. And he said, Edna, this is Aunt Sally Williams. She has an amazing story to tell and she will tell it to you while she is here waiting for her son to come and get her. I want you to take it down so it can be published in serial form in the Independent. And I said, well, I'll do my best. And then I said to her, where would you like to begin? My first job was to take the lunch out to the field hands. They, uh, it was rice and, and bread and, and meat in a wooden bowl. And as I climbed over a fence, I tripped and I spilled all the food. I was beaten hard. And then when I was 12 years old, I went to a camp meeting. And what with the singing and the preaching, that was how I found Jesus. Lord. I know I've been changed, my, my, my Lord. I know I've been changed. Angels in the heaven don't sign my name. About this time, Sally had, had some babies. I had a little boy. My first little boy, he was, he's, I called him Isaac. And I, my second little boy, he's named Daniel. And I, I wouldn't leave him. Another one of, of Sally's jobs where she had to strain the milk every day. Now there's one day when, when the mistress said, the bowl was dirty. And I said, I made sure the bowl was clean, but mistress was so sure, she called her husband and had her husband beat Sally. Sally had to go back to work, but in the middle of the night, Sally sent for her husband, for Abram. And together in the middle of the night, they took their two little boys. Abram carried Isaac and Sally carried Daniel and they walked. New Year's Day was always when they had hiring fairs and, and Sally went to the, to the fair in the middle of, of Fayetteville and there in the, in the crowd, she saw her master. And he saw her, and he knew what she was doing, but it was all right for him, because she'd have to pay him money. I stood there in the middle of the crowd, and I looked out at all the people, and I looked for a kind-faced man. And a man walked up to me, and he said, here's the deal, Sally. If you can pay me $6 a month, your time is your own. So uh, I said, yes, sir, I'll do that. So first I got a great big jug and every morning I made coffee and I'd put it in the jug and I'd take the coffee 
and sell it. And, and, and sometimes folks would give me 50 cents for a cup of coffee. And I brewed beer and I, I made gingerbread. And then I started cooking and sewing and doing laundry. And I was bringing in money. And then I thought, wait, if I can pay for my time, maybe I can pay for my two little boys so they can live with me. So for $2 a month, Isaac and Daniel, they lived with me, and they was never hungry, and I took care of them. I'm going to walk, talk with my mind. Say freedom, walk, talk with my mind. Say freedom, freedom, walk, talk with my mind. Say freedom, freedom. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.